It is richly fulfilling when the champions of the game are up on stage receiving the Brownlow medal. And a beautiful sentiment he could take us back to when he was the kid at mm. boarding school who'd get signed out because he loved the Brownlow. And that's, that goes for all of us, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, it he does. There. He's such a humble person, Patrick Cripps. I don't know you've had opportunity to speak to him and most of us in the media. He is such a really, a really respectful, really nice person. His parents would be really proud of the person he's, he's grown up to be. And he was such a popular winner. Mm. And I was lucky enough to be in the room. He was such a popular winner and it was a thrilling count. Um, <laughs> he described his hangover as 10 out of 10. <laughs> Jared and um, Harry Mackay's yep. mum was put, pouring in waters during the night just in case. But he it, it, it got, got a three about four rounds out. And I said, oh, he's got it because he will get votes in the last two games yep. and he will get three votes in the in the last game of the year. So he, he's earned the right. And the hook in all of this is what happened at the tribunal and the appeal and all that sort of stuff. And I know everyone else wants to live by rigid rules in life. Uh, I don't. Sometimes you get a lucky break in life. And Paddy Cripps got a lucky break. And you know what? And he went off to become a Brownlow medalist, so well done to Pat. It was a whimsical thought ahead of that four-and-a-half-hour appeal that it might not yeah. just have ramifications yeah. for whether Carlton were going to make the finals, but it might play out those six weeks later on mm. Brownlow medal night. That's how it transpired. It adds so much more folklore to that Collingwood-Carlton game to close yep. the season. Mm. So Carlton didn't get what they were after, and the Blues fans have had a month of of counselling to try to work through the trauma of all of that and yet last night they got exactly what they needed out of that game from the Herculean effort and I do think his career arc so I recall sitting with you after his third season he'd polled 18 votes and we yep. pondered I reckon our question that night was how many brown those will Patrick Cripps mm. win to be in your third season to have played 45 games and to be polling 18 votes and then he's been through the years where playing in a, a mediocre to poor side mm. took a physical toll on him. The burden of well, he, that he spoke about he last spoke night. He spoke about it last night. And then yeah. as soon as they've become a winning mm. team, it has, he was freed up physically, he was freed up mentally, and he was superb through the year. He picked himself from last year. I remember Sydney last year, Sam Walsh, come second or third, had 30 votes. We said, how many Brownlows will, will Sam Walsh pick up? There was doubts whether Patrick would survive in the new game. He's not fast enough. He can't move well enough. And he went away and he had an off-season and come back and it was quite striking from round one. We are seeing the old, the old and new yeah. Patrick Cripps. And we were close. I think he said we'd have about 24 by the halfway mark. I think it was about 22 or something. And then he, he picked up a couple I didn't think he was going to get. Yeah, so the three against the Crows in that bad loss... That yep. put him no. over the top. Yeah, right. and I thought, they, they, anyway, that was odd. And as I, I just want to repeat, he's a, he's a really good person. He's a great ambassador for Carlton, his family, the AFL. Um, when you have a really good person win the Brownlow, I, I think it, it warms the heart a little yeah. bit. The champs are the champs for a reason. Yeah, good on. So well done, Patrick. It was fantastic. All right. He so won't be watching this, though. No, no, I he'll think be well down by now. I think he's in bed. <laughs> so